Hi everyone, how are you? This is Monica Shimonik here from Moms Unshackled. And before I get started, I'm going to try to put a link in the comments for you. I just put a link in the comments to a YouTube video of mine that you could either pause this and watch that video or you can watch this and then go back and watch the YouTube video that's in the comments. But they, these topics go together. And this topic tonight is going to build on what you see in the YouTube video here. So the, the topic is, what did I call it? Why, why are we having so many bad days in family court? I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, I have bad days in court because my judge is a jerk. I have bad days in court because my ex, my ex's attorney is a total bully. Um, I have bad days in court because my attorney doesn't stick up for me. And I have bad days in court because the system is stacked against me. So you're, you think that all your bad days in court are because of what other people are doing. And that's a big part of it, don't get me wrong. <laughs> if these people weren't doing what they're doing, we wouldn't have all these problems, right? So there's another piece of this that nobody looks at really. Very few people look at this, this other element that really, really needs to start being talked about more because this is the one thing that you have a lot of control over. You cannot control what other people are doing. You can't control what the judges are doing. You can't control what your GAL is doing. You can't control what your ex does. You can't control their strategy. You can't control the arguments that they're going to present with. You can't, you have no control over other people's asshole behavior. <laughs> you may as well just get used to the fact that you can't control that. What you can control is you and the version of yourself that you bring to the table. You have full control over who you are when you're in court. You have control over who you show up as when you go to court. That's one thing you have complete control over. And we need to, we need to start owning that as parents, okay? Because the sooner we start owning this, the sooner we can have this whole system turned over on its back. So th this is good. It, it's good that we're having these conversations and it's good that we're looking at this. Because if we're continuing, if, you're, if we're going to keep looking at what everybody else is doing, then we're never going to change. We're never going to change the system. Generation X and Generation Y, these two generations, and I'm right in the middle of that. I'm, I was born in 1979. We are the ones that are going to change the system. And it's been done before. The American with Disabilities Act was put in place 30 years ago, this, this year. I think next month will be the 30th anniversary. Women's suffrage, 1920. Boom, they did it. It took them 70 years, but they did it. Gay people just, I think was like 2016, gay people now have equal rights. They're able to get married, finally. <laughs> and they, they worked for about 20, 30 years or so. They got what they got their equal rights. And people of color fought very, very hard. They got their equal rights. Divorced parents are next on the list of civil rights movements. We can do this and we have the internet. We can absolutely do this. Okay. We have access to Google. We have access to Facebook. We could share documents. We could share ideas in like two seconds. We can, we can live stream directly from the courthouse. We have what it takes to flip over this movement, but we're not bringing the best version of ourselves to court. We are bringing, we're bringing the worst version of ourselves to court. We're bringing our traumatized, wounded selves to court. And so what I'm going to say today is that I'm going to call on you to start owning your wounds, own them, own the childhood wounds that are being triggered when you're in court. Okay. Because the family court operates on a foundation of, of hate and abuse. And so what they're going to do is they're going to poke holes in your, they're going to stick, they're going to stick knives in your childhood wounds. If you had an abusive childhood, they're going to stick a knife in that. And so you just need to own that and just be like, and just stop trying to medicate and suppress who you are as a person. You don't have to, you don't have to be, you don't have to hide your true self in court. You don't have to try to like, try to twist yourself into a pretzel to make everybody else happy. You're allowed to be the human being that you are. And when I say bring the best, the best version of yourself, what I mean is what we do. Let me, let me, let me backtrack a bit. We all have the ability to academically prepare for court. You can pick up a book on the Constitution. You could get Ron and Sherry Palmer's uh, green book, 
not in the child's best interest. You can read that. You can learn the arguments. They cite almost 100 cases in there. You can memorize those. You can you could weave those into your arguments. You can have very solid academic. You could bring your very solid academic self to court and like the cerebral part of family court. You can bring that in and you can have beautiful arguments. And the problem is that's not the hardest part. Okay, if you've if you've been to college and you've gotten like a C plus or better in a, in a college class or took AP in high school, or or if you have a, a tough job that requires a lot of cerebral activity, you can do family court. Now this is the problem, and you could do and you could do a decent job. You can do a decent job. So it's not that the information isn't out there. It's not that you're not capable of doing these hard things. It's not that you're not capable of writing difficult motions. You are all capable of doing that. It just takes practice. You need, you'll you need your bullet points. You'll need your references. You're not going to have all this stuff in your head, like ready to regurgitate. It's not that you can't do it. Everybody can do this. Most of you can do this. If you could get through high school and college-ish, you could, you could do a decent job. You'll need to do, you'll need to do the research, but you could do it. So when, so when parents say, I don't know how to represent myself in court, I don't know how to defend myself in court, I don't know how to speak to the GAL, I don't know how to, how to tell my attorney to fight for me. When you say that, what you're really saying is I'm scared of, of talking to my attorney about XYZ. I'm scared of confronting the GAL. I'm scared of standing up to the judge and objecting here and telling the judge my, you know, what you're really saying is I'm scared. And so a lot of you, when you say, I don't know how to do this, I don't know how to do that, what you're really saying is, I'm terrified, I'm paralyzed, I'm petrified. And who can blame you? You know, these are like all of your core wounds that are just being exposed and exploited to to these horrible bullies, these criminals. These people are just, these These are crimes against humanity. You all know that. So, you're put, so your, your most wounded self is being brought into court. And when you're wounded and you're triggered, how in the world are you going to be able to use all this like cerebral stuff that you've worked so hard to learn? It's so hard to learn these things when you're being triggered and wounded. So when you were in college and you had to take your finals, were you taking your finals with a, a marshal standing three, three feet away from you with handcuffs ready to arrest you? No. Were you, were you taking your college finals and uh, being told that after your college finals are over, you're going to lose your children, or you're going to lose your house, or you're, you know, you're going to go to, you're going to be incarcerated. None of you are in that antagonistic environment. So you're in a war zone, you're in family court, you're, the family court is a war zone, and it's very hard to bring the best version of yourself to that uh, toxic environment. Okay, so that's what I teach, that's what I help parents with. I have my battery. That's what I help parents with. I help parents bring the best, the best versions of themselves to court, the most soulful version of themselves, like the, the heart-centered version of yourself. Even your wounded self, that's, that should be welcome in the courtroom. You shouldn't have to suppress it. You shouldn't have to medicate you for being you. Now, if you need anxiety medication just to function, that's different. I'm not saying don't take your medication. I'm just saying parents will self-medicate just to get through court, and that's just not necessary. You're allowed to be human, and there are more soulful ways to manage your humanness, your wounds, because we all have them. We all have wounds, but the only difference is that the family court exploits all the wounds that you have. So that's why we, that's why we close up. That's why our throat chakra closes up and our solar plexus chakra gets wounded in core in our, our sacral chakra. I don't know if you study the chakra systems, but if you do, you'll notice that it really hits all of your chakras. The heart palpitation impacts your heart chakra, etc. So you're petrified, you feel stuck, your mouth goes dry, you know, your heart, your heart starts to uh, pound out of your chest and your ideas aren't flowing and, you know, a judge will sustain an objection and you'll get interrupted and you'll get cut off and you're just being bullied and triggered and you just get messed with so bad and it's just going to mess up your constitution, no pun intended. <laughs> so, so again, all the bullet points in the world all the reference manuals. You could bring Ron and Sherry's book with you to court, the green book. I recommend that. <laughs> and I bring it to court with me every time I go. But if you're being, if you're, if your constitution is being messed with, it's hard to like access that material, even if it's one foot away from you. I've done that before when I was doing my oral argument in my appeal, I was like, Bleh! and I was shuffling through all my papers and they, everything I needed was directly in front of me. 
and I couldn't access it. So I ad-libbed, but I sunk back into myself and I was able to save myself, but I, I did slip up a few times. But I did like a B minus job and I think that's amazing for a parent without, a, without an attorney. And so when you're in court, the you know your brain, your monkey mind, your ego, that's usually running the show. And that's really the part that needs to be like, that's the part that should be con not controlled, but it shouldn't take over. It should not drive the bus. Your heart centered self, your soulful self should be running the show and accessing your notes and speaking. And if someone interrupts you, you could still, you could still reclaim your space in the court after they interrupt you. You know, you can still do what you need to do to get your stuff out there. But when we get triggered and beat up in court, we forget all that stuff. We forget these, t these practical cerebral things that we could be doing. So again, we're leaving the best versions of ourselves at home. We're checking our, all of our defenses at the door when we go to court. This is a system that has been encouraging you since the very beginning to leave all of your instincts at home. Your heart, your, your be the system has been encouraging you since the day you set foot in court to leave the best version of yourself at home. Don't defend yourself. Don't say this. Don't say that. Make sure you dress this way. Make sure you speak this way. Don't clear your throat. <laughs> it's like, don't smile. Don't do this. Don't even look this way. Don't do anything. Don't scratch your arm. You're being beaten down into sub submission the second you walk into court just because you want to get a divorce. It's like, I just, I just want to end this romantic relationship legally. That's all I want to do. And like, that's what you're going to court for the very first day you go. But you're taught to leave all your defenses at the door. You're taught to like throw your instincts in the toilet and just be this robotic, obedient version of yourself, which really doesn't exist. But you're just, you have to generate that for the court to make everybody happy, right? That is wrong. That is the wrong approach. And that's what we have to stop doing. Our generation is going to stop this. This is a bunch of bullshit. This is a bullshit way to be, right? This does not work in any other place ever. When when else have you ever had to be this way? Maybe when you're meeting the CEO of your company for the first time, maybe for the first 5 minutes of knowing your CEO, maybe. But still, it's not an ex it's not expected that you're going to ha have to really ever act this way. It's not a normal way to be. It's not human. And so that's so speaking of humanity, I want you to bring your human version of yourself to the court. I want you to bring your higher self, your most soulful self. I keep saying that because you're the only human being in that room. Everybody else is just a bag of meat, okay? They might have a functional heart, functional lungs, <laughs> but they're not human. They don't, they're just bags of meat, okay? What you have going for you, the best version of yourself is your, your heart-centered self. And you could bring that and that could be your best asset in the courtroom, okay? There is a way to do this. You could wrap up all this amazing strategy with your human self in the court. So um, when you work with me, so I'm launching a course May 13th. I'm launching a course, it's 12 weeks long, it's a signature course. When you work with me, you're gonna get six months of access to Ron and Sherry Palmer's materials on fixedfamilycourts.com. You're gonna get a membership with them. And I teach you how to integrate all of your best assets and qualities to the if you're not, if you don't have an active case, that's fine because the, the information that I give you is, is yours forever. It's, you're, you're going to have continuous 24 hour access to it for life, lifetime access. So again, we can have the most impeccable strategy and we can bring our intuition to court with us and we can do this. We can take this system down because all the other civil rights movements have done this and we are more than capable of doing this. And uh, I get more into that in my course about why, you know, why this is totally possible and doable. And this is actually an easier movement to accomplish than any of the other movements, in my opinion. And we could absolutely do this. If we weren't so beaten down and bullied, and if we, um, it's not that we're being beaten down and bullied. It's that we haven't figured out how to overcome it. Because all the other civil rights groups have been beaten down as well. We have to figure out how to overcome it. And, and integrate integrate healing into what's happening. And we, this is totally possible, okay? This is what I teach parents every single day. So I'm gonna end here, but definitely take a look at the YouTube channel and I'm gonna link something else. I'm gonna link a free course that, I'm, that I have. So I have two courses. I have a course that's being released in a month, May 13th, and then I have a, a free course that's available right now. You could be done with it in an hour and a half. It's incredible. It has a workbook attached to it. 
you get that for free as well. So I'll put the link to the free workshop. It's called the Emotional Freedom Workshop. Okay, I'll put that link in right now. And I encourage you to take that and really understand more of what this is all about because it's it's you're at the you're at the cutting edge of an incredible movement and this can be done. Okay, and our children deserve this. Our children deserve the best version of ourselves and what better way to execute that than doing this. So if you have questions, feel free to send me a private message on Facebook. Um, and I look forward to hearing from all of you. Thank you so much for coming on tonight, and I hope you have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.